This is the second video for the Row E English paper piecing blocks for the Dear Jane quilt. So we are going to do on the second bag, uh, E7 through E13. So I'm going to set the booklet aside and get out the book where I need to have my pieces. The first block is E7 and it's a modified block. So I'm going to go into the booklet and I've already mocked, marked, I've already marked the modified blocks from the first video. So I'm going to do this. This is just, they took this border off. So I'm going to work from this piece so that the pieces match up properly. As before, I'm going to dump out my bag and get the pieces for this particular block. As I sort through these, I'm gonna pile these up in similar shapes so I can find things easier as I go through it later. So I've got little circles and some footballs, shapes, squares and triangles and things, and hopefully these are for this. Yep, so I will go through here and sort to find the pieces for E7. So I found the center square here, and then this big square is this up here. I'm gonna leave that up there. I did find something that sort of fits here, and it's a little bit longer, but it is not the right one. There is one that is just the right length. So just be aware that this one is gonna go for something else, but it's very, very similar. So you're going to want the ones that are a little shorter. So I'm going to set this aside for the other block that this might be going on. There's also one that's shorter than this piece. So once again, be picky and make sure it's the exact right piece for this section. So I found these pieces for E7. There's a lot of tiny pieces in this bag. So there are the right ones and just make sure you pay attention to the rectangles the, the triangles are pretty self self-explanatory there's not ones that are the same exact size so you don't have to worry about that with this one i'm going to label these e7 they're all labeled e7 and now i've got to label my focus fabric remember that this is the center that goes behind that diamond so we have these lattices and the applique part are going to be background. So that means all this back, the stuff that's like behind is going to be the focus fabric. So that's this big square here and these inside half square triangles on the corners. Three, four, and then these triangles that are around the flying geese units. So I've got this here, these two, and here. So there should be this, and then this, and that, this, that, and that, that, and that, and that. If you have a directional fabric, now's the time to label it. They use a stripe here, and you'd want the stripe to be going all in the same direction. I usually put a little arrow in the same direction on all these pieces so that when I bag it up and pull it back out, I know which pieces go in which direction. So I put an arrow an arrow on all of these to make sure that I got them in the right direction. I'm using a blender fabric for this particular colorway so I don't need to have a directional notation. I'm going to go ahead and bag up the E7 block and move on to the next one. Next is E8 and E8 has a lot of uh, different squares and rectangles. It is a modified block when you go to the book, we just did E7, the next one is E9, but if you turn the page, it's actually the E8 is on this page. So we're gonna work from the E8 on this page here because this is the paper pieces that are in the bag. So you actually have a lot less rectangles and squares and you still end up with the same effect. It's just a lot easier to deal with. So I'm gonna take the squares and all the other pieces and lay them out on this piece of paper. I've got the center squares. 
I'm looking at the rectangles and we've got two sizes of rectangles left over because there was three that were very close and we took the middle size out from the last block. This block I've got the bigger and the smaller and this block is going to take the bigger of the two. So I'm going to take all of those, I think there's eight, I'm going to place them where they go and I'm going to set the smaller ones aside and they should you should have all of the the smaller ones, all the rectangles that are left, if you have a pile like I do, should all be the same size. At this point, you have 22 small squares, and they all look to be the same size. Of course, they're not, um, because that would just be too easy. So you need 20 of the 22 squares, and 20 of them are the same size. Two of them are slightly, slightly bigger. Now these are the same size. I take these and I put the edges together. And they match up exactly. And that's, I put a pile of 20 over underneath. But these, there's two of them that if you make sure that one of them lines up exactly at the top, there's a little stair step here that I don't know that you can see. Well, there's a little tiny stair step if we stick it down there and there's two of those that are exactly the same size and so those are for a different block but the other 20 are for this block and yes it matters when you start putting these together so make sure you pull those two out and then put the 20 on this block so now I have all of the E8 pieces in place and it is time to label each one. I've got all of my pieces labeled E8. Now it's just a matter of marking my focus fabric. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here. The corners are going to be focus fabric. And then this center block here. It looks like all of these big blocks, all the big blocks are going to be focus fabric. And then in the four patch, we have the one in the corner. So let's look at this one. The one in the corner is background, and the ones opposing are focus. So this is background and background. And these are background. So the corner is background, and this is focus fabric. Corner is background, focus fabric. Corner is background. This is focus fabric. If you have a directional fabric, make sure that you label it at this time. And I'm going to bag this up in my E8 sandwich baggie and move on to the next block. Next is E9. E9 is a modified block, so we're going to go to the booklet. Now remember, we were on this page, and if you flip it back, then you'll get back to E9. So I'm going to lay this out and it's nothing but squares and rectangles so the rectangles that you have left from those first two blocks you should be using here I think I'm gonna fold this flat because it looks like it's gonna sit better so all of the little rectangles and then these big long skinny pieces so you got three of those I'm gonna work my way from the middle out and then all the bunch of squares, which I will check the sizes of, the middle size squares. And you should have 16 of those. So let me get to laying these out. So while I was sorting the squares, I had to check them all to make sure they were all the same size. And unfortunately, one of them was a little smaller. So I was mar this one I confirmed that was the same size here. So then I checked all of these to this one, like putting them next to each other like I do. Okay, so all of these 15 match this, or 14 match this one. So that's 15, but I need 16. This one is slightly smaller. So it's got a little stair step right there. So I tried to figure out where that went. Well, my E7 center was similar size. So I went back to pull it, and sure enough, this one is the correct size, so I pulled one of the 16 out instead of the one. So take the one that's smallest 
of all of the 16 and put it here. It does not matter for E7. I get that you're probably like, why does it matter? It doesn't matter for E7 at all. It matters for this because if it's off here, it's going to make your row sizes off, which then have to connect to this, and you're going to be having some problems when you go to line this up. So make the smaller one the E7, and then put it back in your E7 bag, and then I'm going to cross this out and flip it over so I can write on a fresh side. But if I cross it out and I end up flipping it to this side, I know that, nope, that's not right. I want to here. So this is my 16 blocks are under under here but I've got all of these down here that are going to go on this block but I wanted to make sure to mention that there's one that's smaller and it needs to go to E7. Now that I've got my E9 pieces laid out I will label each one. Now that I've got them labeled I will mark my focus fabric I'm looking at the picture. The focus fabric is going to be the big squares rather than the rectangles and long bars. So I will mark each square for focus fabric. If you have a directional fabric, now's the time to indicate on the arrows so that you know which way to go when you go to do your block prep. Now that I've completed that, I will bag this up and move on to the next one. Now we come to E10. E10 does not say that it's a modified block, but I don't have any piece left that's this big. So at the beginning of the first bag video, I had four, three, or four, four and a half inch blocks, and one of them was listed for E10. So that's gonna be this. And then you've got the two footballs. What I did last time when I made this block is I actually cut this in four pieces and used this for each fabric, which is probably what I will be doing again. I just need to get a ruler and make sure that I find the center of each side and then draw the line and cut it with a straight one of those slicer, not, not a rotary cutter, because rotary cutters don't work well on paper. I mean, they do, but you don't then want to use them on fabric. So I will use one of those slicer things that moves in a straight line to make sure that I don't have scissor jumps. And then, I, so I'll cut this into quarters, and then I'll have this. That way, I know that I can get this to be background and this to be focus fabric otherwise there's no way to do it so I've cut this in quarters I found the center of each side and just drew a line and cut them cut it in half both ways I did I am gonna write on the other side that I did write on here just because I am so I will put this they may not be exact because I measured it with pencil rather than a laser cutter which is what they use but anyway and these are fine that they're not exact because they are exact to each other and they will match up just fine so I'm gonna label these all E10 now and mark my focus fabric which is the reason why I had to cut it in fours so I have this one and this one and then the footballs, this one and this one. These two are background. So that is the end of my E10 block. I will bag this up and move on to the next one. And don't forget to mark your directional fabric if you have any. Now we're up to E11. E11 is another one that has one of the four and a half inch blocks from the bag. So we have that one. And there are four little half moon things here that get applique on and then there's a big circle that gets applique on and then this center starburst thing so these are the pieces for E11 and now we need to label the rest of them 
Okay, and now we mark for focus fabric, which is going to be the starburst. So the starburst goes on background, which then goes on focus fabric, which then has background applique to it. Okay, so the starburst and the square are the only focus fabric, and the rest is background. So I will stick this in its bag and get to the next one. Next we have E12, and this is where we're going to use all these little tiny triangles that we have in here. And then we have those two squares, those two small squares that were different size. That's why it's important that they go here. When these are this small, the fact that they're different, that they're the absolute right size is, is very imperative. Especially since they're getting attached to these little tiny triangles. And that's why it mattered earlier. So I will go ahead and find my triangles. Which are going to be, so that's going to be the big one. This is going to be the little one. And then there's the squares, which I have more than four squares left, so I gotta be careful with that. I think that's this. So let's get to finding these. So I was looking at these triangles, the bigger triangles, and I have eight triangles total left. And five of them are exactly the same size, and three of them are just a smidge smaller. So here's the three that are smaller, and if I put the tips, if I line up the tips, there's a small stair step right here. Right there. So that means it's a little smaller. But for some reason, I would expect there to be a set of four of each. So pick four of the five of the bigger ones. If you have four of one size and four of another, great. The biggest thing is matching up to this rectangle. So because this is going to go against that rectangle. So if I match up these bigger ones exactly tip to tip, it matches this paper. If I match up the smaller ones, there's a little tiny stair step on the bottom, which it's very hard to see, but there's a, there's a jump right there of knees. So I'm going to use five, four of these five for these and I'm going to look for these triangles. Of the medium sized triangles that are left, they're 16 and they're all the same size, so take eight of them and put them on your block here. Now for the squares, there's six squares left and four of them are one size and two are another and two, two of them are so slightly smaller. And it's the four that are the larger that are going to be your corners, and the two are for the next block. Now that I've got these all laid out, I'm going to mark them as E12. Now that I've got them marked with E12, I'm going to mark my focus fabrics. My focus fabrics are going to be the outside of the flying geese. These outside triangles on each side, and then we have the rectangles, and then the squares in the center, and the triangles touching those points. So all these side triangles are background, these big triangles are background, and the squares are background. Mark your directional fabric if you do have one of those. And I will bag this up and move on to the next block. Lastly, we have E13. E13 is the last modified block. So we go to the booklet. And we've got a little bit of changes. First of all, we do have E13 is the back here. So we'll set that to the side. So that means that these are going to be on that. So after that, we're just going to lay or um, after that, we're just going to lay out these pieces and get them to where they need to be. Now I just need to label 
my E13 pieces. Now to label my focus fabric. So the back, this is background. And then the big triangles are focus fabric. And these are focus fabric. And then there's a bow tie in the center. So there's those two. The squares are going to be background and the outer triangles are going to be background. Label your directional fabric if you have one. And this concludes the row E bag number two bag sort video.